Hey, welcome back. Uh, Tom Gosman here for another tutorial video. Um, sort of a tutorial video series, this one. This, is, this one's going to be quite an advanced topic. Um, it's, I'm going to move quite quickly through it, and um, it's, it's, on a, it's on a quite an interesting, outside the square idea. Um, it's, it's, it's quite Mac native as well. You can actually do this on a PC, and I will talk about this a bit later for you PC guys, but this I'm, I'm mainly going to be t working with Mac here. Uh, it's a Mac native thing, so you guys on the PC, I do apologize. You might have to find a slightly different way of doing it. still achievable, but you'll have to find a different way. Um, the, the concept is, 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 is sending MIDI out of Ableton, but then back into Ableton within your computer. So it's kind of like plugging the output of your external sound card into the input, so the MIDI out into the MIDI in, which means you could load up a track in Ableton, you could uh, send the output out and send it back in, and that track could have various notes and values, and those notes and values can actually trigger things within Ableton, specifically parameter changes, uh, devices on and off, um, triggering clips, recording clips, playing scenes, and all that kind of thing. Really, really new and interesting way of kind of getting more depth in how you can automate um, Ableton almost almost like giving yourself another dimension if you want to mm. mm. so um so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about the various ways that I use this um, what inspired me was um, we were over at the Ableton certification in Australia recently and uh, Tyler one of the participants showed the group this fantastic absolutely fantastic thing that he'd built using um, this kind of technique um, he's called it the Auto Sampler, and you can find this on his uh, website, um, defeq.com. Um, I won't talk too much about it, but it's, it's, it's a brilliant live set where you simply have to click, trigger one scene, it'll send MIDI out to an external synthesizer, then it'll, it'll also record the input of the external synthesizer into individual clips and automate the recording each time a note is played on the synthesizer. So basically you can sit down, find a cool sound on your hardware synth, push one button, and it will record all the notes that you want at different velocities ready to dump into a sampler. So it's very, 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 very cool. Um, and it's, 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 it's inspired me to, to get back um, into this type of stuff and um, go through some of the things that I used to use and uh, some of the new things that I've come up with. Um, I, I did used to do this on the PC. Now to do this on a PC, you're gonna be needing to Google something called MIDI yoke. So M-I-D-I-Y-O-K-E. That's the um, that's the external piece of little software that you're gonna to need to actually do this. On the Mac, doesn't matter, it's, it's already built in natively to it. Or you could just buy a Mac if you're on the PC. Um, yeah, so um, so what I used to use this kind of concept for is, is before follow actions were introduced in Ableton, or before I discovered them, um, I used to use this technique to use empty MIDI clips as ways of sending information similar to follow actions. Um, uh, for an example, um, let's say, okay, I've just got my Megaset 2 loaded up here. I'm just going to jump straight into it and talk to you about it. What, what I wanted to do is before I used to have follow actions, so let's go down here. Here's something here. It's got a follow action of four. It actually says stop, snare noise. Okay, snare noise. It has a follow action of four bars, and we want to play the next. When this wasn't available, I still wanted to automate changes, so I, I still wanted this this first sample here. Let's just call it one for now. I still want I still wanted it to to play after it four bars later, but we didn't have any of these follow actions, so I'm going to turn them off. No action. So we're a bit we're a bit stuck now. And a little disclaimer here. I know I'm talking a lot of shit here, but I do like to explain things which have already been achieved in easier ways. Um, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, if you actually learn the process of how you can do this by alternative means, because usually you come up with something new and exciting. So, I want, let's say I want to play this clip here, and after four bars, I want the second clip to play, right? But we don't have follow actions anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this little trick. So I'm going to, first thing we need to do is go into our utilities folder, which is in our applications folder. We're going to load up our audio MIDI setup, and this is on a Mac, remember? And we'll get our MIDI devices tab here. It might be on audio devices for the start. Let's go MIDI devices for now. You'll see we've got this thing here called an IAC driver. Now, uh, this is the thing that we're going to be focusing on. This is like the little robot, little software node that sits in the background and receives information that you can send to it from Ableton and also sends information back to the program. Um, and we can um, have a look at this by opening it up. It'll be turned off by default. So device is online, that's what it says. That'll be off. We want to turn it on. 
that's simply all we have to do to enable this function of, of what I'm going to show you in these next few series. Um, you can mess with all the stuff if you, if you want to get into it, but we, we don't have to do that for now. We can just leave it. All you have to do is turn it on, close it down, go into Ableton, and now if we go into our preferences, and we go into our MIDI sync area tab, you can see we now have a new input and a new output, just like you would if you had an external MIDI device, um, like a controller with knobs or buttons or, or whatever. Um, this means that we can now output to the IAC driver, and we can also input from the IAC driver. So this is great. So, so on the output of the IAC driver, bus one, I'm going to turn track on. So this means that now <clears throat> in my MIDI clips, I can now assign the notes that are playing in the MIDI clip. So I have a MIDI track with a MIDI clip. I can now assign the notes in that MIDI clip to send out to this IAC driver. Fantastic. So if we just do this, I'm just going to create a new MIDI clip here. And we'll call this trigger. Right, I'm just going to drag these down a little bit smaller so we can see them all. Uh, not that small. Lagging a bit for some reason. So here's my new trigger channel. It's my new MIDI clip. So if we look down at the MIDI 2 area, now we have an option to send to the IAC driver bus 1. This is exactly the same as sending out of the MIDI out of your sound card, except we're actually sending it to something within the computer. Fantastic. So now everything that gets played in here, if I insert a MIDI clip, and we can put in notes wherever we want, all of these notes are actually going to get sent out to the IAC driver bus. Now, the cool thing about this is if we go back into the preferences and look at the input tab, we can turn the IAC driver bus 1 remote on. Okay, so the remote is the, is the, is the part of, of the MIDI which, which controls various parameters. It's not the track, it's not the notes, it actually controls parameters. These are things which are assignable to parameters. Um, so that's cool. So let's, let's keep that on. So now, if I open up this MIDI clip, let's make this quite long, just for, to give an example, four bars long. And let's say on the fourth bar, I put in a C3 like that. Now, if I play this clip, you see, uh, you see the clip will play across, and then a C3 will play on bar four. Excellent. So what we can do is we can actually play this clip, jump into MIDI mode, click on something, and then as soon as that C3 gets caught up to, it's going to assign the note C3 to whatever we currently have enabled in MIDI mode. So let's have a look here. So I'm going to play. Let's go MIDI and let's go perk this two thing I had here. Watch, 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 watch. Boom. See how C3 got enabled there? Because as soon as this clip got to C3, it sent it out of Ableton, back into Ableton, where Ableton picked up that C3 was getting played from some external source, which happens to actually be inside, okay. and um, assigned it to this particular note here. Fantastic. So this is great. So now, if we were to just play this trigger, we can watch it. Two, three, and watch this two here. Boom. It'll start triggering this clip for us. Great. So hopefully now you can actually start getting an idea of how this could be incredibly useful for a lot of different things within Ableton. So what we were talking about before, we want this one, we want when this one um, has reached four bars, we want this two to play here. Well, we've basically done that by putting a four bar loop here in the trigger channel, putting a C3 here and assigning the two to here. So let's go stop and let's play this entire scene. Watch what happens after four bars. Awesome. So that's um that's that's a really I mean it's a pretty complex far far out there way of doing it, but I used to do this use it on the PC using this Midio software. Midio works just the same as these IAC drivers, it's just called something different really. Um and I used to use this to do all my follow action type stuff. Which is great. Um but the other interesting thing which this can offer you, which I guess follow actions don't, is you're not actually restricted to just, you know, triggering one loop. I mean, we've got 128 different notes here, and each of these notes can be triggered to absolutely anything that we want. So let's make this a 8 bar loop, and let's put, oh no, let's put a, we'll just, we'll just do nice and big here, narrow, 
Let's go. T sharp. D. Ooh. D. D sharp. E. Here's five separate notes. Wicked. Okay. Let's stop this clip. Let's play this clip. You notice I've given myself a three bar headroom here to quickly press MIDI and then click on the things I want. If you have an actual MIDI device plugged in, you can just push notes on the keyboard. I don't actually currently have one here, so that's why I'm, I'm doing it this way. But you could just go into MIDI mode and push notes on your external keyboard. Right, so let's play this clip. Boom. And let's go, we'll play... Okay, well, we've already, already decided this one's C1. So as soon as that, there we go, C3. And this one can be C sharp, this one can be D3, this one can be D sharp, and this one can be E. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So now... This will systematically play that clip, that clip, that clip, that clip, that clip, and that clip. Or we can move these notes around to determine when we want them to actually play. Oh, I don't know, let's move these here, like so. Just going to turn um, the global quantize off just so we can see real time how it works. And let's just hit play on here and see what happens. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So you can use this to trigger notes all over the place. You could have a, a have a trigger clip, um, which has various various clips playing. You're not restricted to clips. Let's 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 get rid of all these MIDI, MIDI mappings which we just put in. Where are we here? Um, so we can just delete these. Excuse all the other MIDI mappings. They're just from uh, other things within the set. Excellent. So uh, let's do this again. One, two, three. Four, five. Um, let's say we had a what's well, something cool that we can do? We'll just stop all these clips here. Play this this clip here. And let's put a. Let's just use a flanger. Something pretty extreme. Excellent. So now, if we go back to this trigger, we could have again. C3, we'll use that to trigger that particular clip, but let's use C sharp to actually turn the flanger on. Ah, wow, great. Okay, so we're going to play. Uh, we'll just go play on the trigger. Go into MIDI mode. Click this clip. C3, and flanger on. Excellent. So, if I stop all this, hit play here. The C3 is going to start playing the clip, and then C sharp is going to turn the flanger on. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, in this case, turn it off because it was already on. Let's do that again just so we can. Yep. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Isn't that cool? Um, just to top it off, why don't we go MIDI control? Shit, we can use 128 different parameters and we can draw automation lines as well as send notes. Isn't that great? Let's just use a random one here. 26. Let's do a sweep of 26 from 0 to 127. That's going to send that out. Right, MIDI. Let's get rid of that. Oh no, let's keep that. And let's play this. And we're just going to wait until that flange gets hit. Put high pass on. Right, so now in theory, I'm just going to get rid of these notes because it's um, getting a little bit confusing. Let's go over to the flanger. Look at that, the high pass is moving. Oh, isn't that awesome? So, that's the basic gist of it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get pretty deep with these over the next few videos. Um, this is That, that, that was a, a pretty quick run-through of the logistics of it, so you can use notes to trigger things, clips, recording, arming tracks, muting tracks, whatever. You can use the automation curves to change any parameter, any value, um, and you can stack them up in various different ways, and you can have as many trigger clips as you tracks as you want. Um, you can use as many MIDI channels as you want. You can load up as many IAC drivers as you want. It gets really, really chaotic. So um, that's the gist of it. The next one I'm going to talk about um, a few different ones that I've built. Um, I think the first one I'm going to talk about is a 
a live set which uses the looper, the Ableton Live looper, but what it does in the background is it actually records each, each individual layer of the looper as a separate audio file. So you can still use the looper like you, usual. So, you know, you're recording your, your vocals and your, you know, or your, your, your doodads or whatever you do. Um, but, you know, later on you want to go back and you want to do a proper mix of everything. You know, the looper kind of overdubs everything over and over and it just turns into this one big chunky wave file. Um, with this method, everything is there for you. It's all recorded in the background. And this is using the, um, using the driver. Um, I'm going to talk through using feedback in this to get some really interesting um, crazy shit going on. Um, just, just, just various interesting little things. And finally, I'm going to finish with something I've been working on over the last wee while, which I think um, is the greatest use of this so far. Oh, look at that. Perfect timing. Um, which is a, 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 a mega fucking glitch the fuck out of everything. Um, Thing. I better stop recording because I'm about to run out of disk space. But yeah, thanks for watching, tomcosm.com. Um, download this mega set. If this is the first video you've seen, you can actually download this set right here and play with it. It's good fun. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.